And we're live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another edition of Kayfabe Corner. I'm, of course, your host, JPO Jordan Pierce Owens. As I sit down now, of course, online with uh, someone involved in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, today, I'm very uh, excited to have a guy here. Uh, I've been a big fan of his for a long time now, been several, several years. Uh, we've had some fun up and down the roads. I know him from Damian James, but now let's call him James Phoenix. James, how are you today, buddy? Man, I'm good, my brother. It's good to see you again, and I'm happy to be a part of this uh, great podcast that I've been seeing all around, you know? Very excited to have you here, man. Um, uh, I guess let, let's start off, though. Let's start off with all the way – well, actually, let's go current, actually, just real quick. How are you doing currently in these times? I mean, I usually start off with the wrestling, but let's start off with personal. Just how are you doing since all these uh, wonderful, weird times that we've been having recently? Well, you know, just like everybody else, I'm, I'm having my ups and downs, you know, you know, wrestling, uh, wrestlers in the wrestling world aren't uh, shy from what's the epidemic that's going on. As far as me, you know, I took a little hit during the uh, COVID, not saying I have COVID-19, but <laughs> um, I personally took a hit as far as money wise and, you know, things are looking up, I have a beautiful wife, a beautiful, you know, family, I have a new daughter um, that, you know, now, you know, so. Things are still looking up, you know, trying to keep my head up and keep pushing. Absolutely. No. Good, good to hear, man. Good to hear the things are at least looking up now. You know, a little bit of stumble. A lot of people, of course, went through that here. And uh, luckily, the, uh, things are looking brighter now. Um, so going into the world of professional wrestling here, um, are you a fan from the get-go? Does it come later on to you in life? Where does wrestling, even before your career, where does wrestling begin with you? Well, funny enough, um, wrestling was something that I – I was seldom with as a, as a kid, I would say about eight years old. For me, more so it was martial arts because my father at the time when he was around, he uh, was big in the martial arts. My brother was big in the martial arts. A lot of my family was big in the martial arts. So I started there, you know, doing that and doing a little bit of MMA and stuff like that. But I enjoyed doing karate and stuff when I was a kid. And then I think it was one of my friends, I think his name was Nigel, back when I lived in Queens. He was like, yo, check out this show. It's called WWF. And I was like, all right, man, I'll take a look at it, you know. And I ended up falling in love with just the storyline, especially as a kid. You know, I was like, it's just so cool seeing these guys, you know, from big to small and just captivating the crowd, captivating me, you know. Remembering for me, you know, I watched wrestling from way back in the day. But for my generation and what I, you know, got captivated by was more of the DX and the Attitude Era you know, The Rock and stuff like that, because my friend Nigel was a big Rock fan, you know. So wrestling became something in my life that I fell in love with since I was a kid. Uh, I told my family that I wanted to be a wrestler, and I still remember the conversation. And, of course, family members are going to point you, say, no, that's not where you should go. You should get a career. And, you know, I still did that and became a chef. But wrestling was always something I loved and always was into. Who was the number one person that you were really drawn to? Was it The Rock or DX? Who was that number one main guy for you? Um, for me personally, it I would say The Rock, you know, at first, but I really fell in love with Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero's character, Latino Heat, you know, the way he sold all the way up to, we, you know, we lie, we cheat, we steal, you know, just the way he went about his matches and the way he did his promos. But – before Eddie, I would say it was DX. DX was probably my biggest thing, the, especially Shawn Michaels and his selling, teaching Triple H. And, you know, again, the way they captivated the, the crowd and started pushing the Attitude Era and being opposive to authority, I guess you would say. You know, um, but, I mean, I guess that whole group from DX, Triple H, Stone Cold, you know, Eddie Guerrero. But Eddie Guerrero, I think, would be a lot of my reasoning and why – I got into wrestling, why I uh, found more of a love to it. I guess maybe more so because of who he is and his life. Because, you know, I didn't have always the perfect life, you know. And to see a guy like him himself who came from nothing, you know what I mean? I mean, yes, his father was a wrestler and blase, blase, but they lived in El Paso. El Paso isn't, you know, the best neighborhood and stuff like that growing up. Same thing for me. I'm from Brooklyn and Queens, and I didn't grow up in the best neighborhoods. So seeing – him be able to do that and him talk about all those things made me be like, you know what? I love Eddie Guerrero and who he is. 
So you mentioned before having that conversation with your family about you want to become a wrestler. Where does your first journey finally begin? Where do you start training? Uh, you know, how old are you? When does your journey begin? Well, the journey actually began uh, after having my son. When I had my son, uh, I stopped doing mixed martial arts because, you know, you see guys like Rocky and stuff like that, or not Rocky, um, Tyson and stuff like that who get punched in the head and, you know, Muhammad Ali getting punched in the head. You know, they don't, they're not all right there. So I was like, you know what? I still was watching wrestling and I was like, I missed the performance aspect, being in the ring and stuff like that. And that was around, I want to say maybe about five, maybe seven years ago. Um, when I was living here in Port St. Lucie, I had actually gotten in touch with uh, CWE um, and Chris Quinones and, you know, finding out how I can get into training and how I could get into this business. And he actually gave me my start, you know, and giving me the basics. And then that's when I, you know, came across Zach Monstar himself. And Zach took a good liking into me as well and showed me a lot of stuff in the ring at the CWE shows and, you know, giving me my chances at Real Pro and stuff like that. But that was when it kind of really started was at CWE and with Chris. And then moving from there, you know, working with JB, cool for a little bit. But Pablo Marquez was really the guy who, after Chris and his school closed down, Pablo Marquez was the one that actually helped me get more training and more developed on myself before, you know, the, the name change and stuff like that. Well, speaking of that, let's touch upon that here. Um, even before, is there anything, anything else that I'm not that I'm missing? Is there anything before Damian James or, or where, where, what's the first name that you started using? Funny enough, um, it was, I don't even remember, I'm trying to remember how I came up with the name. I, I feel like I went through so many cocky names, <laughs> you know, when I first, when I first started thinking of names, um, as you know, I started off as a ref, you know, and a lot of people, Made, made a couple jokes and I did dark matches where I had a, a morph mask. I actually think I might have it somewhere in this house right now. My old morph mask, um, Halloween cheat thing that uh, I was just coming out with. And, you know, I, I think I was spitballing with Chris a, a couple names, sitting down and I was like, you know, my name, my initials are T-A-K. I was like, you know, maybe I'll go with Tack. And he was like, nah, man. That's not it. And then I was like, Damien Luther. I think I remember that, something like that. And he was like, you know what? How about James? And I was like, you know what? That actually has a pop to it, you know? And I, I kind of just started to go with that name. And I was like, okay, Damien's kind of a dark name. So the, the character kind of developed around itself, especially being the fact that I'm a big Nightmare Before Christmas fan. So my gimmick, as you remember, it went from the purple to the actual black and white. And, you know, that's when I started more developing more of a Jack Skeleton kind of a, uh, persona and walking around with a top hat and cane. You mentioned uh, uh, Damien. Why, why, why always James? Well, what's the connection to James? Um, the James part, I guess because it's, it was Damien James. I, I guess I just kept it because I was like, okay, it still lets people know that, okay, this is the guy who was Damien James. So let's just – let's just hold on to it so that at least now, okay, he's evolved from leaving, like I said, Damien for the most part get, has a uh, evil context to it and the name, not saying I, I'm worried and how I'm superstitious, but because of the things that have happened to me and I'm trying to let the negativity out of my life and, you know, and keeping away from that. So I was like, I want to drop Damien because I know where a lot of people's mindset for that name goes and keep James, you know, James still has a pop to it. So I was like, I love, and you're going to laugh at me. I'm a Harry Potter dork. So a Phoenix has always kind of been my thing. I always love the Phoenix of the, 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 uh, the idea of it, where it's rising from its ashes. So the, the James stayed because Damien died and the Phoenix was born. So that's why James stayed. I was, I was trying to get to where, where, where did James start off though? Even in Damien James, why James? Um, I, I honestly, I can't even know. I, I really feel like it was just something that just popped with it. It just kind of fit well. So I was like, you know, let's just keep it. Let's just do it, you know. I, 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 honest to God, I, I really don't remember where James came from. It just, I was going with Damien. I was going to leave it there. And like I said, Chris Quinones was 
like, man, you can't just leave Damien. Damien, okay, Damien. So let's let's go with different names. And we we settled on James, and then from that on, it just stuck, you know. So I, I really can't give you a total honest answer on where that came from because it was just, hey, let's pull it out from here, you know. Like, um, I remember Stone Cold was talking about how he came up with his name Stone Cold. He was just sitting there drinking or was planning on drinking tea with his wife. And by the time they got done going through all his names that he wanted to change from the ringmaster, he went to sit, take a sip of his tea. And he says, baby, this, cold, this, this tea is stone cold. And she was like, there you go. You know? So it was more so just a name that just with James that just, we came up with and stuck. <laughs> Uh, tell me a little bit more now about uh, James, James Phoenix. Describe James Phoenix to me. So James Phoenix, like I said, um, is more so a warrior in a sense. Um, never giving up, never surrendering. Um, always always finding a way to, to, to overcome the situation, no matter if I have to be a bad guy, no matter if I have to be a good guy. I'm going to find a way to overcome my situation. And with the fact that, like I said, I've been through a lot, you know, from childhood to now, and I'm still here, you know, a little insight into my life. I, honestly, I should have been dead three times in my life, you know, one time before I was even born, you know, um, and a couple times in my past of stupid things that I did as a kid, and I'm still here, you know, and I guess it's the Phoenix, like I said, that name just has so much representation for me because it just means so much to me. Like, like I said, you know, I, the Phoenix might die, it might burn up, but no matter what, it's still gonna be reborn. It's still gonna push through all that soot and that ash to breathe again, to, to grow again, you know? So that's kind of where it is, you know? It's the name, the name needed to be changed just for me to feel reborn in a sense. And, and that James Phoenix character now is more so a warrior, somebody who's, coming forth to take on any any anybody really you know actually now it's it's James Phoenix the gatekeeper really because I want to go up against anybody anybody that's up and coming anybody that's new anybody that has something to offer to this business I want to be a part of it tell me uh, some of your favorite matches you've had throughout your career who have you really clicked with um the people that I would say that I've clicked with in the beginning when it was CWE um Zach and me had a great match when we were down at uh, X Wrestling in Miami. God, you know, God rest his soul, uh, Jose Mendez. Um, you know, we had a great match between me, him, and the Rosas. I always remember that because Zach gave me some really good ideas. Um, from there, I would say Chico Adams, who's, you know, really doing a really big push right now. Me and him had a couple good matches from CWE to even Real Pro, you know, having a couple matches there. And then, of course, you know, Michael Scott, you know, me and him had some, some matches, some fun matches, man, to the point where we busted each other up <laughs> a couple times. I broke his nose. He busted my leg open, you know, some fun things, you know. And now, I guess, one of my other matches that I always remember is when uh, my first match uh, was a battle royal and CWE, and it was with uh, Thrasher from the Headbangers. And I remember that man beating the living hell out of me, you know, <laughs> beating the living hell out of me. And not, not until a point where he was mean. It was more so for, I guess, you know, now I understand. It was more so to see if I could take it, see if I can take the bumps and bruises. Because I can't take that. How the hell am I going to last in this business? You know, those, those little lessons that you get taught, you know, from the, 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 the veterans and stuff like that, you know. Those are the matches I remember uh, very vividly. Uh, what are some of your favorite promotions and locker rooms to be a part of? Well, as I've, I'm going to repeat it again, but it's the truth, you know, real pro, you know, that was the locker room that really gave me my chance, you know, put me on at, at, at any point, let me have good ideas, gave me creative ideas, you know, and everybody in the back of the room was nobody there that was uh, out for themselves. I would say they were, everybody was, they're having fun. And, and if you wanted to ask somebody a question, they were ready to give you some advice and stuff like that. And then, you know, being in the CCW locker room and, you know, coming across a lot of the, you know, veterans from, you know, the big times, the big leagues, having some of their inputs and information, you know, that was a really good thing as well. 
What uh, what are some matches here that you actually haven't had that you wish uh, and hope to get someday soon here? Like, who have you seen and go, oh, I could have something special with him? Um, I guess I would have. I would like to see myself in a little bit more title matches. Um, I know you guys were planning on me doing a couple there, but then, you know, I had to stop wrestling for a little bit when my wife got pregnant. I want to do a little bit more of that um, as well as, even if it's a win or a lose, I don't care. I just want to, you know, get a little bit more experience in that style of matches, showing the crowd that I can actually withstand with the big guys. And then I would say matches like uh, with Jake St. Patrick. I think you guys have had him at Real Pro before. That, guy, that dude's an amazing worker. Loved working with him in Battle Royals. Um, I would like to, again, I got me and Zach have talked. I would love to have matches between me and him. We always said, you know, especially when I was Damian James, you know, having him and me having those type of matches, you know, all Hallows Eve type of matches. I think that would be fun. I definitely wouldn't mind doing those. And, uh, again, I wouldn't mind going up against Chico Adams again. You know, it's been a long time. You know, so Chico, you heard me. <laughs> Calling you out, Mr. Chico. Hey, he does not suck. Uh, no. <laughs> well, where do you see yourself in five years, man? Oh, five years, man. Uh, I, I definitely would say probably back at training, uh, hardcore again. I've been working out, trying to get myself back into the shape that I should have been still at when I first had started. And in five years, I mean, I want to really be pushing harder in wrestling. Um, doing more with my family, doing evolving more with my family, um, and just giving a better life for for wrestling and for my my family. Really, you know that that's my plan. Is just to really put some effort into the next five years on both both fronts. Do a little bit of a, a little bit of a role play here. Uh, it's it's after a show, and someone walks up to you, pretty young kid, and he says, "Mr. Mr. Phoenix, that was a great match. I want to be a wrestler too." What advice do you give someone that's looking to break in? Well, kids. I mean, depending on the age of the kid, because you know, some kids they're they're just at that time they're just anything they see they're ready to do. You know, but if they're at a good age where they really understand, hey, look, this is something I like, this is something I love. You know put forth your effort into it. And that's really another reason why I got into doing uh, wrestling was to show my son and my daughter and, you know, my wife's daughters that no matter what your dream is, fight for it, you know, because nobody else is going to fight for it, but you, you know, no matter if I'm heel or face at that point in time, if, if this kid is genuinely asking, how am I going to do this? It's more about giving that kid the right direction because for me, I'm not going to lie, I personally feel like if I had more of a support system when I was a young kid, that I probably would be a little bit further in the wrestling business. Because as I got involved in it, I already had a kid. You know, I already had responsibilities. So, you know, for that kid, it would be more so, this is what you want to do, then focus. Anything you put your life and mind to, you can achieve as long as you focus. And prime example, I'm going to talk about Chico Adams. You see Chico. Chico has started in this business. I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't want kids or anything like that, but because of the fact that he's put his heart into it, this man has gone and is doing amazing things now. You know, he's, he's able to do more because he's, he's focused on achieving that goal. So that's mainly what I would say is like, you know, put that focus to whatever you want to do. If it's wrestling, if it's, you know, being a cook, if it's being a chef, put that focus to it. And that's the only way you're going to achieve it. Well, you heard it here, folks. James Phoenix says, don't have kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's a very important question for you. Uh, have you seen any good movies lately? You said, say what now? I didn't hear you. Have you seen any good movies lately? Uh, some good new ones, man. Uh, I would definitely recommend, if we're anybody for, with Netflix, uh, Six Underground. That Ryan Reynolds movie was off the chain. Uh, for graphics, graphic-wise and realization wise, I guess that's why I fell in love with that movie. Um, I guess me, because again, I do have kids and I'm, I'm a family man. It's hard nowadays to see anything that my daughter's not watching <laughs> and my kids aren't watching. So, I mean, that was a good movie. I'm trying to think of, see, I can't even pull, I can't even pull anything right now because I'm so focused on, hey, let's watch Trolls or, <laughs> you know, Curious George. But, you know, that was a good movie. And then I, we saw something else, and I'm, I'm going to 
chime in with my wife. Babe, what was that other movie we saw? New movie that you made me watch. Ah, she can't remember either. But <laughs> do, you, do you remember um, anything about it? <laughs> which one? Uh, oh, crap. It was. Damn. No, actually, I can't because I mean it was a good movie, but it was because I was in and out dealing with my daughter. I I, I really guess I didn't pay that close of attention to it. But the Six Underground movie, if anything, I would recommend any person to go and watch that. And Cobra Kai, <clears throat> Cobra Kai, man, that show is awesome. Beginning to so far, have a, how far I am, amazing show, amazing show. I just I just binged uh, both seasons, yeah. As soon as I got to Netflix, I uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was I was expecting it because you know them, back then they weren't the greatest actors. You know, you, you watch the original stuff; it was it was okay acting. You know, you, you were more there for the action and the storyline. But now, as they're older, the acting has been a little bit more solidified, and because I guess we have more of a connection to it, we're more invested in the show. You know, but it, so far the show is amazing, so I would recommend Cobra Kai all the way. Yeah, I agree with you on that, man. Uh, any 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 plugs? I mean, I don't know if you have any upcoming events or if not, any social media. Any plugs you want to give out? Uh, social media, uh, James Phoenix, uh, Instagram. You can find that. Uh, James Phoenix on uh, Facebook. And um, until I change it, Damien James Bookings, uh, <laughs> gmail.com. Um, any person that's ready to, you know, work with me, I'm ready to, you know, get back to working again, you know. That's where, that's where I'm at right now. Absolutely. I mean, hopefully we're close here, man. We'll continue to have some fun over in Real Pro once that starts back up. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know I'm down, brother. And I, I can't wait to meet uh, Mr. Phoenix. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to meeting now. Yeah, the whole <laughs> different gimmick, brother. It's not the same. <laughs> so, so All right, man. Does that mean your win-loss record is now we're set back to 0-0? Zero, zero? How does that work? I'm, um, I, I, guess, I, guess, I guess seeing that you brought that up, I guess I could say that. I could be like, you know, undefeated right now. You know, anybody else that wants a piece of this. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely can't wait to get back to that side of the world. Um, I, like I said, I spoke to Zach. Zach was inviting me to his house because he has a ring up there. He said, anytime I want to roll out there. So that plug as well, you know, guys, if you're on the Fort Myers side, Zach, <laughs> Zach Monstar, guys, go train with him, you know. So, yeah. Ugh. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Phoenix, it was a pleasure talking to you, my man. Hopefully we'll see each other phys physically one day very soon. If not, yeah. stay safe, stay sane. I appreciate it, my man. All right, my brother. Be safe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was KFib Corner. James Phoenix, JPO. Thank you. And as always, keep it KFib.